You gotta get a world tour. From here on out, J. Cole has eliminated himself. I don't want to hear him in no hip-hop conversations. He is talented. He will probably be in the best rappers of all time, the top 20 list. But from here on out, fuck a big three. I don't want to hear y'all talk about J. Cole. No, 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 no. Let that nigga go ride his fucking bicycles. You, you know, you know, you know what I'm mad at? It's the fucking fans. This bitch nigga never wanted to be the best. Y'all try to convince him that he had the talent to be the best. This bitch nigga was riding tricycles in Tribeca. He was being the 12th man in Ghana playing basketball. I didn't even know to play basketball in Ghana. Y'all convinced this fuck nigga when he been told you he had no passion for this shit. He ain't got no passion for this shit. You convinced this light-skinned nigga with no passion to come back and rap like he the best. But he not about it. Soft this baby shit. Then y'all gassed him up. Oh, yeah, no. I think you're the best now. You're rapping the best. This nigga's pussy. Facts. Nigga, friend, folk, nigga. It could be my mama who dropped that Kendrick verse. I'm giving her the beats. Fuck is you talking about? This is hip hop. What the fuck? You acting like you and Kendrick are lovers. You acting like it's Meek Mill and Diddy. Fuck is going on? The softest bitch made shit. I've never seen this in hip hop in my whole life. Everybody. Nigga, you know. Nigga. Everybody's laughing at him. It's no way this nigga is this fucking soft. It's, it's, it's no... Wait, he a... Drake. Drake. You might have to diss this fuck nigga just cause. First person shooter don't hit the same no more. Imagine we go somewhere. This nigga been talking like he like you. He told my me and you the Spider-Man meme. The whole time Drake been side-eyeing that pussy like, are you really like me? Because I ain't ducked no fades. I took all my challenges and I've been ready for smoke. I've been saying, who gonna call me out? Whether it was the Pusha T's, the Meek Mills, the Commons, or anybody. I'm with it. Are you with it? Nah, it's the Spider-Man meme. It's me and Drake. Okay. We run into the ops. We might be outnumbered. It's two versus five. He been telling me the whole time. He's like me. It's a Spider-Man meme. I'm like you. We're one of the same. I bet. All right, the opposite. Here. All right, let's squabble. Fuck it. It's over. Let's go. Let's squabble. You're squabbling up. You fighting three niggas. He's supposed to fight two. You punching niggas. Niggas punching you. All of a sudden, you look over. This pussy nigga is copping a plea, apologizing to the ops while you still. What is this? What the? Yo, what, what the, what the? He apologizes to the ops mid battle. This shit is over. You might have to knock him out too. You gotta knock him out. You gotta knock him out too. Drake, you gotta knock him out. I'm sorry. This nigga was never built for it. You gotta knock him out. It's you versus everybody. What the fuck? My teammate apologizing to the ops? The ops showed up to give you BTA. You know what that is? Belt to ass. How the hell are you apologizing to the ops? What the fuck? You know even why? God, calm down. You know another reason I, I think this nigga is just pure pussy? Did y'all hear Control? When Kendrick dropped Control over 10 years ago, you know who he named first? He named you by your government. Even Kendrick know you a bitch. The first nigga he named that, that he said couldn't fuck with him was you. It was you. You, nigga. He didn't call you by your rap name. He called you Jermaine. You forgot? Oh, you must have forgot. Because you trying to suck his goddamn dick. I remind your ass. That bullshit no more, nigga. Chat. Last night, I've seen the weakest, softest move in hip-hop 
I texted everybody I know. I talked to everybody I know. I said, do not bring up this nigga J. Cole in no more hip-hop conversations. Is he a good rapper? Is he a good lyricist? Does he make good music? Go do your little festival over there. But hear this. No more could we really speak about hip-hop and the competitiveness. When we talk about hip-hop and we talk about the big three, historically it's always been not only the biggest, but it's always been the guys who honestly really give it up. The competitive art form that is hip-hop. It's a sport. It's a sport. It's a language. It's a culture. Hip-hop has been so much things to so many people that we all have a shared sentiment of what it is. It's almost like we don't even need a one standard definition because we know hip-hop when we see it. You know when something is hip-hop. You have a feeling to it if you grew up in it. You have a feeling to it if you study it, you love it. And what we saw last night was a beta male bitch getting on stage, rapping for... <sighs> people, people, I just want to, I just want to paint you a picture. I want to paint you a picture real quick. There was once a rapper who always had the talent but never had the drive. You could go all the way back to when he used to be talking about the lectures Jay-Z used to give him. A guy who had the skill set but didn't have the passion. Here's the difference as we oftentimes compare rappers to athletes. You see, Kobe, he had the skill set, the talent, but he had the drive. It's the reason why we say the Mamba mentality. It's unique, special. It's a killer instinct. It's something that can't be replicated. It's something that you have to know that even though you're greater than everybody else, you're chasing and you're going against the ghosts. It's a different level when you stop playing against your contemporaries and you're chasing legacy. But this guy told us a long time ago, this wasn't him. We wouldn't accept it because we couldn't see talent be wasted. Oh, no. No, you just need to do. No, you just need to claim it. Claim it. Just claim it. Stop saying. Just claim you're the best. We gave him all the, the tools. Hey, we, we, we basically just we pushed him into the spot. We pushed him into the ring. Now he's in there fighting Javon Day Davis. He's over there on his knees. You're like, what the fuck is going on? But something happened in the last three years. The nigga came back around after getting cut from the Ghanaian basketball team. Like, how the hell do you do that? They called him riding tricycles in Tribeca. And for whatever reason, he said, man, you know what? I'm going to go for the top spot. I don't know who hyped him up. But I think it was probably him being the, the butt of every joke. Yo, Drake keep liking on me and acting. Drake keep patting you on the back. You not like them. Oh, you're like, we, we clowned him. He said he was ready to go for the throne. Start rapping. Start doing the things that you would think the guy who want to go for the throne would do. God damn it, he did it. I seen him on features. He got out of his comfort zone to a certain extent. I loved it. This is hip-hop. The guy who was almost boxed in at a point in social justice raps now showed that, yo, I could get with Moneybag, yo, I could get with this guy. Yo, I'm the guy who, I'm a, just a great rapper. But all along, he kept telling us, I'm not the guy. He told us he let Nas down. Let's bring the song up. You gotta be a special breed of bitch to let Nas down. It don't take too much. Nas famously said, Hip hop was dead. Nas famously said hip hop was dead. You know when Nas said that? Him and Jeezy beefed immediately. Fuck is you talking about hip hop is dead? What I'm doing is hip hop. That's what Jeezy said. Because hip hop is more than just a time period, hip hop is ever evolving, but hip hop still has a core tenets. 
So Jeezy felt offended. Many other people felt offended. What do you mean this shit is dead? What am I doing? What I'm doing is hip-hop. It's running through my blood and my veins. But when I heard this nigga, J. Cole said he let Nas down, I knew this was a special breed of bitch. If you listen to the song, Let Nas Down, he was basically saying that he couldn't live up to the expectations and there's a lot of times that the passion didn't drive him along certain paths that we thought he would have. J. Cole was telling us back then he wasn't the guy. Let me tell you what separates the people at the top versus the mid-tier guys because this is where, and Big Sean, this is your only mention for the stream, you could have been up there too. But you're not the guy. You're not the guy. Not for talent, but for drive, hunger, desire, determination, and passion. You see, you can't be the guy if you're cool with being in the mix. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, I, I'm one of the three. You're not the guy. Nobody comes home to say, oh, no, no, I made the playoffs. Man, fuck the playoffs. Did you get the championship? But we've always noticed. Until like two years ago, which I think he was cosplaying as the number one rapper. Well, two, three years ago. because It's been like since 2020, 2021. That's when Cole's demeanor really started changing. The other niggas around him that he was trying to compare himself to, they never said no big three. They never said it's, oh, it's us. They always said it's me. You heard what Kendrick said. They be debating in barbershop. Who's the best? Me? Jig on us. Andre 3000 m and m The rest of y'all new niggas? Y'all just new niggas. Y'all not even involved. He never seen himself with y'all as peers like y'all in the same bucket. You heard what the other niggas said. Yo, I'm top two and I'm not two. So, of course, of course I feel let down. Of course I feel disappointed. When I bought into some of these bullshit rhymes that I could tell, you know, when he dropped this recent album, you know what I said to myself? I just did Vlad. I said, why does album sound like he had to wrap it in the mirror to make himself believe it before he wrapped it? He don't sound like he believed this shit. That's the difference between being in the mix and being the guy. But he almost got me. And actually, let me just give it, let me be honest, he did get me. Because when I heard him on first person shooter, when I heard him, I said, these are the bars of a gladiator of somebody great. This is, this is, how, this is how you come at the game. He's finally evolved. He grew the bitch out of him. He was rapping like he didn't give a fuck who felt away. Because he's always rapped about, oh, he's rapped about kind of being the best, but every time he say he's the best, he shout out the other two niggas who are really the best. So when I hear him and he's like, yo, niggas so thirsty to put me in beats, dissected my words and start looking too deep. I look at my tweets and start sucking my teeth. I'm letting it rock because I love the mystique. Fuck all that other shit he talking about. Just know if I diss you, I'd make sure you know that I hit you like I'm on your caller ID. I'm like, ah! It's a bloodthirsty sport, y'all. Now, there's going to be a couple pussy niggas in the mix who's going to think that we're saying, no, they should be fighting and killing each other. This is not what this is. Hip-hop isn't intuitively or just equal to violence. Hip-hop is synonymous with competition. It's a competitive sport. It's always a competitive sport. This shit started in a park with a jukebox and niggas just emceeing. It was always competitive from the get-go. Some people want to take the, the, take the route of, oh, no, I'm just doing my own thing. I don't compete. Sure, cool. But at the end, this was always a competitive sport. That ch that's one of the things that defines hip-hop from other genres. Jazz, country, rock, they're not as competitive. But hip-hop is. So when I hear a nigga 
start saying these things. Just know if I diss you, I make sure you know that I hit uh, that I hit you like I'm on your call or ID. I'm like, okay, cool. But then the bitch always snuck into the verse. Love when they argue the hardest MC. And this is where I knew this nigga was always a fraud. Is it K dot? He named the nigga first. Is it K dot? Is it Aubrey or me? We the big three like we started a league. Keep in mind, this is the only nigga who keep talking about the big three. This nigga, you know, who, you know who J Cole is. He's Jordan Poole on the fucking Warriors. Yo, it's the big three is is me, Clay, and you, Steph. Like, no, nigga, the fuck, get out of here. That's why, yo, Draymond, sleep this nigga, man. The fuck is he talking about? Sleep him. Fuck is you talking about? But I ain't gonna lie. Even then, he had me gassed because he did out rap my goat on this track. I kid you not. I thought he was ready. I thought he was the guy. Why? He told me. He said, we the big three like we started a league. But right now, I'm feeling like Muhammad Ali. Y'all know who Muhammad Ali is? If you know anything about boxing, whatever they criticize Floyd and these other boxers about, about picking fights, ducking fades, doing this, picking the right time, Muhammad Ali gave everybody smoke. Anybody want to smoke, he was a chimney, nigga. He was portable asthma, nigga. He was everywhere. That's who Muhammad Ali was. You want some smoke? I'm there, nigga. You want some smoke? I'm there, nigga. Anybody could get it. Anybody. So I'm saying, damn. J. Cole is on his Muhammad Ali shit. Any nigga could catch the hands. Lyrically, of course. I'm like, okay, this is going to be great. Then he goes more into it. The one that they call when they shit ain't connected no more. I feel like I got a job in IT. Rhyming with me. Is the biggest mistake. But I keep telling you, he's a nigga who's talking tough, but he always try to mention the real tough niggas. The Spider-Man meme is me looking at Drake. Nigga, talk about yourself. Leave Drake out of this for a second. It's like we recruited your homies, blah, blah, blah. Anyway. I'm watching all this shit. I'm like, okay. He says niggas ain't, he, he wanted people to test his pen. Kendrick gave a light verse. And when I say light, I don't mean it's trash. But Kendrick has a whole diss song. Yo, from what I've heard, hey, take this as what you want to hear. From what I've heard, Kendrick got a diss song violating these niggas' souls. What you heard on like that was a light pack, but not because it's weak. It's because he ain't get into it yet. He's violating their souls on some other shit. So this was really like, this is a lightness. Hey, y'all niggas trash. Uh, fuck the big three. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Niggas is What's up? I I'll battle both y'all. What's up? And you drop a whole EP, a whole tape. And you couldn't even pretend to be tough for three days? You apologize to him? How you apologize to the nigga who dissed you? And called you trash? Called you... Call, call your discography a light pack. Chat, when I seen this yesterday, a singular tear fell down my left eye. I couldn't believe it. It's a reason why, y'all remember back in the day, I used to call this nigga Napkin Cole. I forgot why I stopped. I shouldn't have not. This nigga was never about it from then till now. I always told you that J. Cole's raps was, he, by the way, here's another thing. And I knew maybe this is why you apologize to motherfucking Kendrick Lamar. Because everything you tried to say about Kendrick was cap. I told you he had to rap that shit in America because he ain't even believe it. Would you, you you really think your discography better than Kendrick, nigga? Talking about four albums in 12 years, I could divide. Yeah, that nigga got three classic in 12 years, nigga. How many you got, nigga? Everything he was saying about Kendrick, we said about him. Oh, yeah. That shit was trash. It put us to sleep. You know your nickname that I've been calling you is Nap King Cole, right? You're literally audio NyQuil. When we want to put some shit on, you know the white noise you can put on your, your TV or your Alexa or whatever the fuck? You put on a nice J. Cole album. It'll knock you out in 15 minutes. So when I heard him saying that to Kendrick, I'm like, is this nigga lacking self-awareness? 
what the fuck is going on? But again, I admit I was fooled. When I seen this last night, chat. When I seen this, he is exactly who we thought he was. A nigga not built for the crown. Listen to this weak ass speech. I've been, I've been happy. I've been, I've been moving on my own accord, off my own desires, my own wants. Now, why am I saying all of that? All of that shit led me up until this point. Ten years later, after this song, I'm here. Here I am. I've been, I've been just chasing my shit. You know what I mean? Like, like following my dream and just trying to like head to the fall off in the way that I wanted to do it. And so, I put out this project. On Friday, called Mike Delete Later. I don't know how many people done checked it out or whatever, but I put this project out. And I swear to God, I'm so proud of that project because I know one, it's just a lead up, it's just an EP that leads me up to this thing that I've been working on for a long time. And I know the work it took to get to a certain type of skill level, and I love this shit. So I, that shit mean a lot to me, right? So I'm so proud of that project, except for one part. Jesus. It's Christ. one part of that shit. That make me feel like, man, that's the lamest shit I ever did in my fucking life, right? And I know this is not what a lot of people want to hear. I know I can hear my niggas up there right now like, nah, nah I don't do that. But I got to keep it 100 with y'all, right? I damn near had a relapse, right? Because y'all heard some shit that happened two, two three weeks ago, however long it was. Y'all heard that bazooka that was dropped on the motherfucking game, right? Even in his apology, he dick crying the next man. What's yo? Whose goat is this, man? Yo, if you a Kendrick, yo, if you know, if you a Cole fan, I don't care, man. I need one of y'all industry niggas to come up here and debate me, man. What type of beta male bullshit, weak nigga shit is this? How you dick crying the nigga in? How you dick crying the song he dissed you on? You're apologizing for your song and dick riding his song. It's like you in the club, a nigga slap you, you punch him. And now later you say, man, yo, I'm sorry for even punching you, but I ain't gonna lie, that slap that you slapped me with, that shit was crazy, right? Yeah, I ain't gonna lie, I felt that. What the fuck? What the hell's going on? So all of this time of me moving on my own accord, for the first time I was tested. Why am I tested? Because I got the world. This is my fucking problem with these rappers who rap and shit they don't mean. Bitch, nigga, you been saying for three years. Somebody test me. I'm in my prime. Nigga, you said on the shit. I could drop two classics. You been begging. Please, somebody test me. Nobody. Yo, hey, when I beef, I want it to be real. Yo, let's go. Please, somebody, anybody, anybody. The four foot nine midget who can't even, he got to jump to get on the monkey bars. He sent, he wasn't even a scud missile. He was a warning shot. You're like, oh no, never mind. I don't want to be tested no more. I'm good. What? What type of bitch made shit is this? And I got my niggas like, what you gonna do, Cole? <laughs> my niggas like, bitch boy, I must have had a thousand missed calls. Oh my fucking God. Text flooded. I couldn't even answer my shit. Nigga, it's wartime. I blame all y'all. Y'all should left this nigga in Ghana once he stopped rapping. I keep telling you about these Kawhi Leonard ass niggas. If they don't have passion enough to drop music consistently, leave them where they at. This nigga think he, this thing must have thought he was Michael Jordan when Michael Jordan quit, quit, quit basketball to go play like uh, baseball. This nigga was riding Tribeca's in, uh, 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 tricycles in Tribeca, went to Ghana to play basketball. He was a 12th man shooting one three a game, gassed as fuck. He did not want to rap no more. Y'all niggas was like, no, we need you. We didn't need this fuck nigga. Let him stay wherever the fuck he's at. This nigga came back. Cosplaying as a top rapper and only did a bunch of beta male bullshit. Right? Niggas want to see blood. Yeah. And you've been telling us somebody test me. You've been back. You've been. Yo, why this thing acting like we set him up? Set him up to squat. Well, he's been talking like that. Numero uno. And I was conflicted because. Because you're not like that. That's why you were conflicted. You're not like that. Yo, if Jay-Z don't call this nigga and tell him, bro, you a bitch, bro. I'm going to just, like, we, we love you and everything, Cole. But, man, this is the reason why we got to keep you on tracks like this, like, all my life, man. You not like that, my nigga. You just not like that, bro. 
one, I know my heart, you know what I mean? And like, I know how I feel about my peers, these two niggas that I just been blessed to even stand beside in this game, let alone chase, chase they. He's still jacking the big three. They're not chasing you. <laughs> They're not chasing you. You're an afterthought. You're the nigga who's always at the runner up podium. While these niggas are getting gold and silver, you're over there just like, yo, I, at least I'm on this bitch. <laughs> For all y'all niggas who came in fourth and below, y'all not here. I got my bros trophy. They not thinking about you. You ain't no fucking competition. Greatness, right? So I felt conflicted because I'm like, bro, I know I don't really feel no way. But the world want to see blood. I don't know if y'all can feel that, but the world want to see blood. You know, I realized I thought Kanye West was the person who tried to embody and try to like, you know, do this Jesus cosplay the most. Is this nigga? This nigga think he on some turn the other cheek. I love my brothers, nigga. Man, get out of that shit, nigga. These niggas violated your soul. So I say all of that to say, in my spirit of trying to like get this music out, I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I moved in a way that was that I feel spiritually feel bad on me. Like, like I try to like jab my nigga back, and I try to keep it friendly, but at the end of the day. When I listen to it and when it comes out and I see the talk, that shit don't sit right with my spirit. I know why it don't sit right, nigga. Because you gave some weak-ass bars, nigga. Your shit wasn't hitting like how Kendrick... You see, when Kendrick diss you niggas... Kendrick, yo, Kendrick diss you niggas like he's a father coming in to slap his lazy son out of his sleep. He talked to y'all niggas disrespectfully. You drop some shit and you don't like how people reacting to it. Now they're making you seem like you did some bullshit and you and your feelings. See, you're not a gladiator, man. Spirit, that shit make me feel. That shit. I guarantee if people were gassing this shit saying, yo, th yo, this is how you take the number one spot. Great response. Yo, he demolished Kendrick. He not apologizing. But this is the bitch made shit I'm talking about. This is the bitch made shit I'm talking about. Basically, he talking about people kind of reacting to his this. If he was on it, you would have stood on it. No, did he? You would have been like, man, this is what I feel. Nigga, don't diss me. I f yo. This is, why, this is why I'm telling you, man. I don't care what y'all say about Drake, okay? I'm glad Drake my favorite rapper. Because ain't no fuck nigga about a distance in a goddamn song and we about to sit here and, like, acknowledge their diss and then apologize for hours. Fuck that! Disrupts my fucking peace. So what I want to say right here tonight is in the midst of me doing that and, and in that shit, trying to find a little angle and downplay this, this nigga's fucking uh, catalog and his greatness, I want to say right now tonight... The nigga even admitting he was capping in his fucking bars. Bruh, you couldn't pay me. You, there's nothing you could do to get this out of me. No diddy. Like, it's no way, even if I really feel like, damn, that's my mans and I shouldn't have something like that. Nigga, I'm never admitting that. Nigga, we could talk about it at the end. Yo, Jake almost not got no real friends. If anybody got some real friends, y'all never fought with y'all friends? And then afterwards, he'll be like, yeah, that was some bullshit. Yeah, I shouldn't even. But nigga, this is mid-fight. It's a mid-fight. Fuck is you doing? This is mid-fight. Like, how many people think Kendrick Lamar is one of the greatest motherfuckers to ever touch a fucking microphone? I'm done with this nigga, man. It's over. It's over. It's like the nigga literally is telling you, I shouldn't have dissed this guy because he's so great, he's better than me. This guy... It, it, it's like, like what, what can we do with this? What, what, what can we do with this? Yo, 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 oh, Kendrick gotta have some secret for this nigga. Kendrick must know that J. Cole maybe secretly love men. Fucking trannies on the, I mean, I'm transsexuals. I don't want to mess with people's community. Mess, yeah, yeah. J. Cole cheated on his wife or something, got a secret baby. I don't know what the fuck he must have known about this nigga, but the way he's copping a plea, nigga, at, at least, I think Diddy was at least saying, you know what, man, fuck Cassie, nigga. We about to take it to court. Oh, never mind. We're not taking the court. We selling. This nigga is folding faster than Diddy. What the fuck? And this is another thing, too. This is another thing, too. You see all y'all little Dreamville, 
Dollar in a Dream, uh, 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 um, J. Cole fans, we blame y'all niggas too, man. Y'all niggas pussy too. I'm sorry. Let this have been an OVO fest. Let, let Drake had been an OVO fest talking about in the middle of the Meek beef talking about, hey, you know what, man? I shouldn't even drop no back to back. Matter of fact, ain't Meek one of the realest niggas ever? Nigga, it would have been radio solid, nigga. Who would have booed that nigga? Fuck out of here. It's war time. The fuck are y'all over here? Ah! Same, same PG Lang Fest. Streamville Fest. The fans pussy too. Who the put yo? Who the boo Drake off Drake off stage? Get the fuck on out of here. Dreamville, y'all love Kendrick Lamar, correct? What? As do I. So I just want to come up here and be like, publicly be like, bro. That was the lamest, like goofiest shit. And it make I say all that to say it made me feel like ten years ago when I was moving incorrectly. And I pray that God align me back up on my purpose and on my path. You know what I mean? I pray that my nigga really didn't feel no way. And if he did, my nigga, I got my chin out. Take your best shot. I'm gonna take that shit. It's only right. Kendrick, if first of all, I think, you know, we're gonna talk about where this battle is gonna lie afterwards, but Kendrick, sp don't spare this fuck, nigga. Hit him with a guillotine. You see, a weak nigga like this, let me tell you, out of everybody, the worst type of man that you have to be careful of is a nigga that is spineless. He goes left, he goes right, he stands on no moral code, no principle. He don't even stand on his fucking word. Now, I know some of y'all might be like, no, 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 he's just like, you know, he realized he did something, he apologized. That's not what we're talking about. A man that is spineless, that will tolerate disrespect, that won't stand on his own word, that will say that if A happens, they'll respond with B, and A happens, and B's not an option no more, is on stage dick riding the ops, is somebody you want to go to war with. Let's be honest. And again, obviously, we're just making up shit. This is an analogy. Does J. Cole sound like the nigga that if you got problems in your city and you walking home late at night, you want to be with? He sound like he might, he the nigga who going to run once, 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 once five niggas pull up, or he might be on their team beating your ass too. It's a spineless nigga, man. It's a disgusting trait to have. I know some of y'all going to be like, no, 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 he's, Nigga, this is a it's a lyrical competition. In reality, in reality, I have a theory, people. Honestly, I have a theory. You see, J. Cole, I've always said is a sucker. I watched him for three plus years get buttered up on stage every time him and Drake takes the stage. Drake gives him a five minute speech every time. Hey, brother. I know you're not the best. You'll never be the best. I'm the best. But you're right behind me. You're number three. You're just there. Matter of fact, if it wasn't you being kind of mediocre, I wouldn't get to be way better. He gives him mad backhanded compliments. And J. Cole sits there and blushes in. Oh, oh, my God, Aubrey, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Not one of these times does he ever say and flip the script to say, Drake, thank you, because you made me the best rapper in the game. He plays his role like a good boy. He plays it like a good boy. I remember watching the whole time, like, you still letting Aubrey tell you this bullshit to your face? Drake don't think it's a Spider-Man meme. He says he's a top two, it ain't two. So this is what I think happened. This is how malleable, gullible, and this is what happens when you, you truly don't have that killer instinct. You don't got mama mentality. <clears throat> I think Kendrick called this nigga. And I think Kendrick said, bro, you know I fuck with you. Them bars really wasn't for you. You know who I'm shooting at. Because Kendrick been trying to get at Drake. But he does it in, in like interesting ways where he doesn't seem like he's only going at one person. He'll do a control where he's mentioning 15 niggas. 
He'll do it in other different ways where it seemed like it could apply to maybe more than one, even though you kind of know it's for Drake. And when he felt attacked on this first-person shooter, he made a response that seemingly applied to both. I think he called he called J. Cole and said, bro, that shit wasn't meant for you, bro. And you know what J. Cole did? Oh, what? Oh, my bad then. Yeah, my bad. That's another reason why you don't want to spawn this nigga on your team anyway. The ops in the last minute could be like, oh, yeah, when we shot up the car, you was in there? This is what it is. Yo, yo, when we shot up your car, oh, you was in there? Oh, nigga, we wasn't trying to shoot at you. We tried to shoot him. The fuck? Damn, if we knew you was in the car, we wouldn't even shot. You're like, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, even though I got shot my leg and my hip and, oh, shit, you wasn't shooting at me? Oh, all right, well, we ain't got no beef then. That's J. Cole. That's J. Cole. That's J. Cole. That's J. Cole. He just basically toast. Oh, as, oh, as long as you wasn't going at me. Even though you sent all type of scud missiles, hit me all type of places. Oh, you really wasn't trying to get at me, though. You were trying to get at him. Oh, well, we cool. My bad. My bad for shooting up your block the next week. I should have even done that. My bad, my bad. I thought she was just trying to kill me, so that's why I acted like that. But now that I know you was trying to kill him, and I was just like in the car on some collateral damage, I want no smoke. That's J. Cole. Shit on the chin, boy. Do what you do. You know what I mean? Like, all good. Like, it's, it's love. And I pray that, you know, I pray that y'all are like, forgive a nigga for like the misstep, and then, and then I can get back to my true path, because I ain't gonna lie to y'all past two days felt terrible like it let me know how good i've been sleeping for the past 10 years this is the reason why y'all should have never told this nigga to stop playing basketball and come back to rap you should told him to stay there nigga he could have been playing with motherfucking he could have been playing in taiwan nigga with motherfucking dwight howard for the shanghai sharks or some shit nigga leave that nigga over there okay he been in where ain't want to get up in this rap competition shit how good he been sleeping Nigga, what type of what type of what type of what, what type of sleep you been getting in the last two days? Nigga, yo, this nigga's acting like this is a problem. We're gonna talk about it. This is the problem with a fuck nigga like J. Cole. This nigga done made Kendrick Lamar get a buy round. This nigga's acting like like Kendrick Lamar is Freddy Krueger running through his dreams, giving him nightmares. Nigga, how you gonna give your op that much credit? Nigga, you couldn't get me to admit this even if it was true. I can't sleep. I can't, I can't, I can't even sleep comfortable. I keep waking up in hot flashes. I, I'm waking up in cold sweats. Nigga, what? Nigga, this is the time you say I slept comfortable as a baby. This nigga say he can't sleep. How is your sleep disrupted by a four foot eight midget that call himself Kung Fu Kenny? The fuck is going on? So all of that to say, man, I want to I want to now perform the song that's a reminder to me of getting back on the right path and getting in tune with God. And the name of the song is called Love You. This thing on some chance of rapper shit, man. I love my wife. I love my, get get him out of here, man. Get him out of here, man. Nigga, you ain't rapping about God in our long, nigga, man. Now you talking about God? Like, get out of here, man. Get him out of here, man. Get him out of here, man. Yo, make a gospel album, nigga. Nigga, go go make a collab album with Kirk Franklin or something. Get out of here, nigga. Fuck out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here, Ken. No, I have a kid. I can't even say the name. Get out of here, J. Cole. Go make a fucking collab album with, with Kirk Franklin or something. Now it's all about God and spiritual. Get out of here, nigga. Hell is going on. I gotta get right with God. I gotta. What the hell is Kendrick doing to y'all niggas, man? Is it voodoo? What do you mean you gotta get right with God? You gotta get right with God because you retaliated, nigga. It's self defense. Then niggas say you gotta go get right with God. Then niggas say yeah, you gotta go get right with God. What in the fuck is going on? You just gave Kendrick a win. He don't even gotta respond to you, fuck niggas, no more. I dissed the nigga, he tried to diss me, then he said he got to get right with God because he know this shit didn't sit good. And the shit was trash. You got to go get right with God.
Nigga, what type of voodoo is Kendrick doing? He got his ops apologizing, saying they got to go get their spirituality right. Hey, that boy Steezy, stop the bullshit. Drake ain't doing that. I promise you, I promise you, I'll bet my whole career on it. Drake ain't apologizing for shit. And I, I'll say this. Drake is hoping. Matter of fact, you know what? This is going to end up well for Drake. Not in the, in the, in the meantime, because people are going to think that Kendrick's like undefeatable. But let's get this pussy nigga J. Cole off the uh, 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 off the chessboard. Like, get him out of here. Like, this nigga wasn't built for it anyway. This nigga was going to soak up, like, you know, all type of, you know, uh, 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 um, scud missiles and everything to make Drake look bad anyway. This is Drake versus Kendrick, okay? This nigga was, get him, <laughs> get him off the field. One thing for sure, two things to certain. Drake ain't ducking no fades. And I'm going to be honest with you. Drake wants that fade. Badly. And he's been wanting it for the last 10 years. Now, y'all are going to ignore facts. Y'all going to act like Drake is a nigga who just ducked everybody. When he's engaged with even, the, I'm not going to say a push a T is Kendrick, but he's engaged with a lot of people. Actually, pretty much everybody who's really ever said anything about him. Here's the thing I keep telling y'all about Kendrick. Kendrick is doing it for moments. We ain't see Kendrick really fire the real bombs yet. This is why I think this nigga's just a bitch. The hell? How the hell? How the hell you bowing out before the beef start? Y'all are just doing subliminals at this point. If y'all think for one second that Drake has worked and dedicated his, his life to this art of making music, I know some of y'all are like, oh, they even do pop music. He's been the only consistent one year in, year out. One or two projects a year, features, giving all the new guys. If you think that he did all this shit for 10 years, 15 years, just to duck Kendrick Lamar when he's taking on all other competitors, you clearly are just not a fan of uh, um, Drake. I'm not saying that it means he would automatically win, but if you think he's ducking, you're just not a fan. These guys are playing chess. Kendrick, Drake. Drake trying to bait Kendrick to drop the actual nuclear bomb, which, which is everybody's heard that Kendrick got like a whole dedicated this song in the cut. Because now you can assess the situation much more. Who Drake never mentioned nothing about no big three. Who, who gives a fuck? Right? So we want to know or he want to know what the fuck does Kendrick got on him because you know Kendrick is a, he's a shrewd operator. He's not going to come with a bunch of like bullshit rhymes. He's going to come with some substance. Some way somehow. He's going to come with it. Yo, this is how I'm dissing you. Drake is trying to assess that before responding. I keep telling y'all this is the reason why the Pusha T shit went left. He hopped out first, not thinking that Pusha T was going to come back with only the same used, washed up, oh, writing shit. And that's why he addressed it on Duppy Freestyle. He said, yo, I just I just left him over there putting pen to the page. You know, I I I, I just wrote 30 hours for y'all. Y'all can't talk like he thought that was their ammo. Using the same tired and tried, using abuse angle to get at Drake. Hey, you can't really fuck with us. We don't know if you're writing. He, he. He addressed all that jumping out, but he jumped out first. Remember, infrared came first. He jumped out first. What's up? Oh, y'all gonna talk about me not writing? Y'all gonna talk about ghostwriters? Well, what up? I don't wrote for your man. This ain't third, blah, blah, blah. Cool. Then, of course, Pusha T comes with the actual T. So, you're dealing with a more shrewd operator who's also knowing he's dealing with someone else who's very formidable. And not only formidable in talent, uh, rapping, but also has a formidable career where you can't just necessarily shit on where by just saying, yo, you unsuccessful. Because by every margin and metric, Kendrick Lamar is a very successful rapper. So he's playing the game close. He's playing chess. I'm going to tell you where this, this fuck nigga, J. Cole, comes in and messes it up. Because now Drake is in a position, if he responds even remotely soon, he is in a position where he's operating from being down 3-1 and the game just started. Why? Because the way this battle was set up, 
from how Kendrick kicked it off with the most direct shot on like that. It's me versus y'all two fuck niggas. Fuck the big three. I'm gonna show I'm gonna show people that both y'all is trash. And here's the thing: a battle is easier one when you seem to be battling two people at once, right? You get to basically attack both at once. It's like it's like me in a fight. If I get my ass whipped in a one on one, you're gonna be like, damn, that nigga really fucked you up. If I if I fight three people at the same time, even if I lose, you're like, damn, nah, that nigga really held his own. Do you get what I'm saying? So it's in your advantage if it's one v multiple. So again, here's where Drake is at after this fuck nigga move by J. Cole. Everyone is, and, and you're going to start seeing it. By the way, today's the first day we're streaming on X. Hey, we're streaming on X today. Rumble's our home, but we're streaming on X. We got crazy numbers right now. We got 36,000 people watching on Twitter. That's what it's telling me. I don't know if it's true. We got, tw uh, how much is this? 25,000 on YouTube. About 9,000 on, on um, Rumble. And on Twitch, we got 2,500. But what you're going to see on, like, especially X, you know, Twitter, people have these conversations. There's a place that's like a town square. Shout out to Elon. What you're going to see is that people are going to mythicize Kendrick Lamar and almost turn him into the boogeyman without him doing a single fucking thing more. You know why? Because, of course, it looks amazing on paper when you diss two niggas and a nigga try to diss you back and apologize for even trying to do that. You ain't apologizing for you dissing them. They're apologizing for even trying to question you. So, J. Cole has put Kendrick and Kendrick's song... Or his verse or like that in a position, no diddy, that is unfathomable. How do you feed a song? How do you defeat a song where it's two people that got dissed on that song or that verse, and one of the people who got dissed apologized for even trying to respond because you're so great? Do you understand what I'm saying? At this moment, the, the verse for like that for Kendrick has taken a new form. It's now synonymous with hip hop history. Some would have said before because he's calling out his contemporaries and the other two guys who was running the culture with him. But it's more even synonymous with hip hop history because forever and for always this clip right here will be remembered as the time that Kendrick called out the other top two niggas and one of the niggas tried to respond but cop to plea before he could even respond. That's powerful. That's powerful. So here's the thing, and this is why I think Drake might have to body slam this nigga J. Cole too. Fuck nigga, even if you did not, if you that scared of Kendrick, nigga, go call him on the phone and cry to him if that's what you want to do. Don't admit it publicly because you now put this situation in a position where now I got to do twice the amount of work in terms of people are looking at this verse is like the illest verse ever. Let me ask y'all a question. If you watching right now and allegedly we got, we got maybe over 50,000 people watching type the first two lines of like that. You don't know. You probably don't know. You got to look it up, Google it. I get it because what Kendrick is really good at is making moments. And the moment is calling these fuck niggas out. The verse itself will not be one of them verses where you know from beginning to end. You're going to know the lines that call niggas out, but you're not going to know the whole verse from beginning to end. You know that, and I know that. You know that, and I know that. You know that, and I know that. But... The legacy of this verse is going to continue to grow. I'm going to tell you why. Because this verse has to be potent when a nigga like J. Cole does this. I'm going to play this one more, and then we're going to go into some reactions to what everybody else is saying. Then I'm going to give you the war strategy for, for Drake going forward. Then we're going to also get into what Kendrick should be doing now. Right now, Kendrick, is he just got a buy round. 
The nigga got a buy round. And he don't got to do a motherfucking thing than watch these guys. God forbid. If this Thursday or Thursday night or Friday morning. When we don't trust you two drops. If there's another Kendrick verse. If there's another Kendrick verse. Hiroshima. We'll get into that, but, you know, I, I was talking and dubbing over this, you know, uh, J. Cole, bitch made apology. Let me just play it all in one that you guys could hear it, and then we'll move on to some responses from the culture. Here we go. I've been, I've been happy. I've been, I've been moving on my own accord, off my own desires, my own wants. Now, why am I saying all of that? All of that shit led me up until this point, 10 years later after this song. I'm here. Here I am. I've been, I've been just chasing my shit, you know what I mean? Like, like following my dream and just trying to like head to the fall off in the way that I wanted to do it. And so I put out this project on Friday called Mike Delete Later. I don't know how many people done checked it out or whatever, but I put this project out. And I swear to God. How, um, I, I hate to cut, I hate to cut it off. I, I know I, I just want y'all to listen to This nigga really named this project. This is the problem with this guy. He dropped a project, might delete later. It already tells you that this is, you, you know what type of people I like? I like people that move with intention and are decisive. I don't like people, and I, I refuse to do business with people that seem to be double dutching. They, they can't make up their mind. You see, somebody who's always in the middle can't make up their mind. I might do this, I might. No, as men, you make a decision, you execute it, even if it turns bad, you then try to pick up the pieces. Indecision is a female characteristic, that's a fact. You ever go to the drive through with a girl? She knew goddamn well you was going to Wendy's from 15 minutes, you drove all the way across town. Y'all at the, the drive through what you want? Um, um. I don't know. What, what are you getting? It's a female trait. It's a female trait. Oh, I might delete this later. I might wear this. That was a red flag to me. The fuck? You might delete. What's up with this indecision? <laughs> indecision. So when the nigga said might delete later, we thought it was just a funny title with not too much like meaning. We didn't think that that was actually his demeanor until actually I, I got to get the longer version of this. Apparently he says to his team, yo, we got to get that song off of DSPs. The song I'm dissing Kendrick, I don't want no one to consume no more. Take it off DSPs. Take it off my album. Let me see if I can find that clip. But, but, but keep listening. I'm so proud of that project because I know one is just a lead up. It's just the EP that leads me up to this thing that I've been working on for a long time. And I know the work it took to get to a certain type of skill level. And I love this shit. So I, that shit mean a lot to me, right? So I'm so proud of that project. Except for one part. It's one part of that shit that make me feel like, man, that's the lamest shit I ever did in my fucking life, right? And I know this is not what... A lot of people want to hear. I know I can hear my niggas up there right now like, nah, nah I don't do that. But I got to keep it 100 with y'all, right? I damn near had a relapse, right? Because y'all heard some shit that happened two, two three weeks ago, however long it was. Y'all heard that bazooka that was dropped on the motherfucking game, right? So all of this time of me moving on my own accord, for the first time I was tested. Why am I tested? Because I got the world... And I got my niggas like, what you gonna do, Cole? <laughs> my niggas like, bit boy, I must have had a thousand missed calls. Oh my fucking God. Text flooded. I couldn't even answer my shit. Nigga, it's wartime. Boom, 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 right? <laughs> niggas wanna see blood. And, and I was conflicted because, one, I know my heart. You know what I mean? Like, I know how I feel about my peers, these two niggas that I just been blessed to. Hold on, I, I, I found the clip on Twitter, I think. 
Let's see. Where he basically he says, "Yo, just take it off streaming platforms." This is the most bitch made move I've ever seen. Live my fucking life, right? And I know this is not what a lot of people want to hear. I know I can hear my niggas up there right now. Like, oh, it's the same clip. Nah, I don't do that, but I gotta keep it a hundred with y'all, right? I damn near had a relapse, right? Because y'all heard some shit that happened two, two, three weeks ago, however long it was. Y'all, y'all, y'all heard that bazooka that was chopped on the motherfucking game, right? So all of this time of me moving on my own accord, for the first time I was tested. Why am I tested? Because I got the world, and I got my niggas like, what you gonna do, Cole? <laughs> my niggas like, big boy, I must have had a thousand missed calls. Oh my fucking God. Text flooded, I couldn't even answer my shit. Nigga, it's war time. <laughs> niggas wanna see blood. And, and I was conflicted because, one, I know my heart, you know what I mean? Like, I know how I feel about my peers, these two niggas that I've just been blessed to even stand beside in this game, let alone chase, chase their greatness, right? So I felt conflicted because I'm like, bro, I know I don't really feel no way, but the world want to see blood. I don't know if y'all can feel that, but the world want to see blood. So I say all of that to say, I'm a bitch. in my spirit of trying to like get this music out, I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I moved in a way that was that I feel spiritually feel bad on me. Like, like, I try to like jab my nigga back and I try to keep it friendly. But at the end of the day, when I listen to it and when it comes out and I see the talk, that shit don't sit right in my spirit. That shit make me feel, that shit disrupts my fucking peace. So what I want to say right here tonight is in the midst of me doing that and, and, and that shit, trying to find a little angle and downplay this, this nigga's fucking uh, catalog and his greatness. I want to say right now tonight, how many people think Kendrick Lamar is one of the greatest motherfuckers that ever touched my <laughs> Drew, girl, y'all love Kendrick Lamar, correct? <laughs> As do I. So, I just want to come up here and be like, publicly be like, bro, that was the lamest, like, goofy and shit. And it made, I say all that to say, it made me feel like 10 years ago when I was over here correcting. And I pray that God align me back up on my purpose and on my path. You know what I mean? I pray that my nigga really didn't feel no way. And if he did, my nigga, I got my chin out. Take your best shot and take that shit on the chin, boy. Do what you do. You know what I mean? Like, all good. Like, it's, it's love. And I pray that, you know, I pray that y'all, like, forgive a nigga for, like, the misstep and then, and then I can get back to my true path. Because I ain't gonna lie to y'all. Past two days felt terrible. Like, it let me know how good I've been sleeping for the past 10 years. So all of that to say, man, I want to I want to now perform the song that's a reminder to me of getting back on the right path and getting in tune with God. And the name of the song is called "Love Yours." I want to do it for you. Maybe I missed it, but the quote that everybody keeps saying is, "We're taking that off streaming services." Uh, this is this is you know going back to that previous thought. I was losing it. That's why I went back to the video. Kendrick's a phenomenal rapper. Yes, we, we do know a lot of verses he has where we know from top to bottom. But what he's the best in the game at is moments. Let's be honest. Moments. He's the person, everybody's chilling, pulls a pin out of a grenade, drops it, and dips. Let's And he looks back and lets y'all niggas deal with the ramification and repercussions and the consequences of that. You know, um, from when he's dropped... The heart many times when he's dropped control even this verse now what's been more important than how those verses are again in a lot of those verses you can't really recite them from top to bottom but you do know what he did and in all those verses he made moments he did it yet again with uh like that and you know it it brought me back to you know just the very essence of hip-hop and even jay-z who acknowledged it on imaginary players when he said man listen man it's just funny how one verse could fuck the game up this that's that's kendrick rap will never be looked at the same no more we will always remember this apology we'll always remember how niggas moved after this we'll always remember how the perception of people changed it it's one verse and that's that's why hip-hop is such a amazing place it's so great one verse.
fuck this entire game up. It happened back then. It's happening now. Again, when I, when I mention about being indecisive, this is why I like Kendrick, because he, everything he's doing is with intention. He's not saying these things to try to backpedal or double dutch. He's saying this was in, with intention. And I'm crystallizing this by pointing this out because I don't think any of his contemporaries have that skill. And that skill is to drop the grenade, run out the room, and you once you look back, niggas' arms is missing, legs is missing, niggas got a hole in their head. You can fuck the game up with one verse. That's the ultimate disruptor. He's the only one doing that now. You know, you know, uh, um, back in the day, I think people did it more. Even though, you know, we want to compare it to like, for example, a Kendrick verse. You, you would have those songs where like even shit, even on a lower level, even just starting up 50, you know, um, how to rob where he's kind of calling people out or this and third or, or people just kind of challenging others in the game that everybody had to pay attention to either that song, that verse, because either you're mentioned or you're either challenged. That was unique. That don't happen no more. And this is another reason why I'm glad J. Cole's out the way. Send that nigga, send that nigga to go be go, go, go shoot basketball with Caitlin Clark or some shit, okay? This hip hop. There's two people that we have to reasonably understand, you know, well, one most in particular, but you're gonna say I'm biased. I think Drake has kept it hip hop throughout his whole career. Does he do pop music? Yes. But has he kept it hip hop with treating hip hop situations? As hip hop, and yes, I'm saying this with saying, yeah, he he took the L to push a T. He took the L. Hey, you, you know the rules of this shit. It don't change no matter who the person is. Yeah, you have the better career no matter what, but you should have responded, and you didn't respond. You know you're taking the L. That's what it is. We call a spade a spade. But as he responded and met the met the challenge and rose to the the expectation multiple times of dissing. Other artists are competing. Let's just call it competition because this sounds like there's going to be further ramifications. Yes. Has he done it consistently? Yes. Has he done it more than his peers? Yes. Has he done it when he doesn't have to? Absolutely. But then you always have to respect Kendrick Lamar. Does he come in and always try to challenge or call out the game for sometimes he might think it's weak or whatever the case is he always disrupts the natural flow of things especially when niggas try to do the go along get along shit shout out to Kwame Brown yeah he fucks that up too he drops these moments fuck it grenade y'all niggas deal with that that is hip hop this is why it's inevitable these guys gotta go at it and when I mean go at it we're not talking about like some some Blood sport in the streets, niggas getting killed, shots beat. No, 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 no. It has to be settled. There can't be a one and a one A. That's not how hip hop goes. That's where J. Cole got it wrong. There is no kumbaya. This is kind of like golf. There ain't no, oh, okay, I'm here. I'm Tiger, but I'm here with Phil Mickelson and Rory McIlroy. No, 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 no. Got to be one. We don't do one ace, we do one. He's the best, y'all niggas is afterwards. See, Kobe wanted to be the best. He ain't want to be the best or the next best. No, he wanted to be the best. Same with Michael Jordan. And for a while, people were saying or questioning that about LeBron. It's inevitable. Drake and Kendrick must happen. We have to, we have to, now extrapolate how does that happen given this because I thought this was the closest possible time we were going to get it. But if you ask me, and this is my advice to Drake, fall back. This pussy nigga, Kendrick, not Kendrick, sorry. J. Cole has fucked up the optics of this battle that you have now, you're now being perceived as battling a nigga who is so potent 
that he's getting your ally to, to apologize. It's not the right time for you to respond. You probably need to suck the air, no diddy, out of this moment that Kendrick has literally have everybody now thinking he's undefeatable, he's the boogeyman, he's King Kong. I think you got to fall back. Doesn't mean that the battle still won't happen. Now, if I'm Kendrick, and this is what I'm saying, we're going to strategize a little bit. If I'm Kendrick, I already cleared J. Cole. Now I need to clear Drake. And I ain't going to let him escape. I'm going to bomb on him too. Let me bomb on him again. Now we got to respond. People already look at me as Teflon. Drake better come with it or I'm going to kill him too. Okay? Let's look at a few more responses because the culture has been, you know, really just in disbelief that the, the, this is what we're, we're, we're doing. Okay? We'll get to the Meek Mill shit. Meek Mill is going crazy. <laughs> yo, my nigga Kevin Gates, man. This is, yo, this nigga is ridiculous, bro. Uh, I do think a lot of people are, are, are trying to withhold their opinions because they do like Cole. They probably like Kendrick. And they're probably wanting to be in the favor of Drake. But from all the conversation that I have, and I'm not saying I know everybody, everybody's severely disappointed at J. Cole. They think it's, I can't even sugarcoat it. They think this is a bitch move. Just being honest. Just being honest, okay? Let me see. Damn, this Wale and Meek shit going crazy right now. <laughs> uh, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. We'll get to it. Holy shit. All right. Uh, let me go back to the Breakfast Club with them talking about it. Let me find some shit. We might as well address it. There will always be a big three to compete. But this was inevitable. These guys are all pushing 40. The big three is over. The big three as we know is it is over. But in reality, the big three hasn't been the same big three for a while. Hear me out. The big three is no longer Kendrick, J. Cole, and Drake. It's clearly Drake, Kendrick, and only one guy fits in at the, three, the third position. He right here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We got to kick Cole out the whip. Cole's out the whip. We're going to go let him make his gospel album. Let him go back to get his inner peace. Let him go get right with God. All oh, this bullshit. This nigga's like said to go get right with God. Like, what the hell is this nigga talking about? Let that nigga go get right with God, man. All right? Let him get right with God while we establish a new big three. Okay? Nevadius is the goddamn third person. To be honest, maybe not lyrically, and I get it. And that's always been a criteria of the big three you have to be a lyrical savant a genius so to speak a mc and that isn't future even though he like lyrically don't sleep on him but he's more of a song maker he's a vibe curator he's a street soldier but it's clear man if we're going to talk about people who influence this culture, the big three is used to being significant of three people who influence, shape, dictate, command a hold on hip hop culture, operate as gladiators and as king in their respective part that they control. And we have to be honest, future does fit that criteria. Future is in the big three. We get J, uh, J. Cole, he's out of here. We're going we, we gonna to set him down to Big Sean Land. Nigga, go do, an, go do an album with your girl or some shit. Get out of here, nigga. We don't want to we don't hear from you. Go, go ahead, nigga. Get out of here, nigga. Okay? Get him out of here. Him and Big Sean and, uh, and Wale could go make some spiritual hymns. Like, we don't give a fuck about that, all right? But when we talk about the big three, I'm sorry. Future got to join. I'm sorry. Future is in it now. I'm sorry. Okay? The big new big three, Drake, Kendrick, Future. That's it. Sorry. <laughs> 
So. Uh, pull up some comments here. I had a hard time sleeping last night, Chad. I promise y'all. And that's when I realized how much I loved. And, and you could say maybe for different reasons. Because some of you are like, well, well, that's how you get paid these days. Well, well, but bigger than that, before I ever got paid, man, I've always just had like, I'm like, I've always said, I'm like a super fan of this shit. I know some of y'all might think, nah, you just kind of, you feel a way about this because it ain't about Drake. This to me, I just couldn't believe that a rapper who we've respected for over 10 years would cop a plea in a beef bro, in a battle. I can't believe it. Okay, here we go. Disgusting. Okay. T.T. Mooner, thank you for the five. It says, yo, Cole could come back from this, but he got to come back with a harder disc for shock value. No, he can't come back from this. What are you talking about, a harder disc? After the nigga apologized for even engaging in the beef, we don't want to see you do no sneak attack. No, it's over. It's over. Like, you're done. So you're done. Just fade on into the sunset. You're done. Now, I have to be clear. I'm not saying J. Cole is going to cease to exist in a, as an artist. He, he's a phenomenal artist. He's always going to be mentioned as one of the best rappers of all time. He just will never be mentioned as the guy. He was never the guy. He couldn't be the guy. That's the difference. We're not talking about, there was a time, just to, just, just to kind of crystallize this for y'all. There was a time that LeBron James, his competitor, right, was Carmelo Anthony. They're like, yo, is it Braun or Carmelo? That's one and number two. And at a point, we realized the only ring Carmelo was ever going to get is the one he gave to Lala. He wasn't the guy. Wasn't the guy. Will he be mentioned in the history when you think about basketball? Yes. Great player. But he wasn't the fucking guy. And don't you ever mistake it. He's never been the guy. Won't be the guy in three different lifetimes. He'll never be the guy. We learned that with time and experience and watching him. And every time he had the opportunity to be the guy, he never stepped up to the occasion. That's J. Cole. Doesn't make him any less great. But we'll always remember, he was never the guy. He tried to cosplay as the guy but he was never the guy. And it's okay. Because in this culture, in any type of competitive uh, um, um, form of, you know, or field of entertainment, there's not a lot of guys running around. God's Cologne says, man, he should have said nothing to begin with. I agree. But this brings to light another aspect of this entire Situation. Remember when I was telling y'all Drake is the GOAT. And the reason why when y'all keep saying this, Kendrick, 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 when it comes to battling, I said, well, I know y'all think Kendrick has a leg up, but I think Drake should be the favorite. He's battle tested. You know what all y'all said? Oh, who cares about that? Oh, who cares about the battle test? Oh, again. Let me tell you why you care. It's moments like this. You know the feeling when you got to sit there and you got to soak up no diddy? The response from someone else dissing you, you got to be in that moment. You got to rise to the occasion. You, you, know, you know the feeling when Drake was probably in that motherfucking studio listening to beat after beat right after somebody just questioned his integrity and his pen said that he doesn't write and that he was a fake and a fucking fraud, that pressure is insurmountable. You got to sit there wallowing it. You can't go to sleep. You know you got to respond. You have to. It's like a game fucking seven. That's what makes the greats. Game seven. 
because we know a couple of basketball players, they, they lit all throughout the, the regular season. Come to playoffs, they can't do it when the moment needs to. When the moment calls, you're not there. That's why these things are important. That's why when I said about battle tested, I said there's moments that we would have looked at Drake to say, this is a time that if you're a fraud, if you're not built for it, you're going to crumble. He answered multiple times. These guys ain't battle tested. We don't know how they would fear against a guy who drops a potent verse that everybody's talking about and now you drop an EP or an album and you're trying to respond, but even your responses are cap. Hey, you're trash. You call me trash? No, you're trash. Uh, the people don't believe that. That's the point I'm trying to tell y'all. The bow tested approach, when I when I mention that, is because I think J. Cole, when he says he can't sleep, he's not built for this pressure. He's not built for game seven. He's not built. LeBron, it took LeBron. LeBron crumbled one time. When he was versus the Mavericks that year, he crumbled. Yeah, he did. It, it took a lot and a lot of probably inner soul searching for LeBron to get to the point of, hey, it's a game seven, or damn, I'm down 3-1. They said I'm the best. I got all the accolades. I've broken every scoring record. They gave me the MVPs, but nothing fucking matters if I don't prove it now. It's the buzzer beater. Yeah, Steph, you're the greatest shooter ever, but if you if you go airball that shot and not make it, at least a decent amount of times, why does it fucking matter? He wasn't battle tested, people. J. Cole, when the moment demanded and it asked, and he, this is why I keep telling you, he told us for three years, I'm waiting on the moment. Try me, test my pen, make it real, come at me. Let's see what happens. I will handle it because I'm ready for the moment. I'm built for this. But it was all a fucking lie. The nigga missed two nights of sleep and fucking copped the plea. My favorite rapper would never. He wouldn't have slept for a month trying to get that response. He's just not built for it. Y'all don't want to admit it. Y'all don't want to admit it. Y'all don't want to admit it. Somebody says Drake folded game seven against push. Drake engaged that beef. He lost. But it's not for the reason of, of oh, I can't perform it. He felt he just couldn't respond. And he had a song. He felt it was not going to be a positive for his career. Hey, you take the loss, you take the chink in the armor, your career continues. It is what it is. That's the only rap beef he ever lost. Let's be honest. J. Cole's not made for this game. How can you grow up in the 90s and still foe like this? J. Cole gave us many signs. Um, you know, his very first album, and his career is very interesting to me. You know, Cole, who came up and he's on Rock Nation or whatever, um, I was always waiting on the... Okay, I'm going to make this comparison. I don't know if you're going to get it. Or I don't know if maybe I'm stretching. If I'm, if I'm doing too much, be like, act, nah, that won't hit. You know, everybody starts with admiration for their mentor, for the person who's putting them on. But at a certain point, you become peers. And at a certain point, you got to have that moment where, you know, AI is crossing over mic. Or, you know, you have that moment where you might have to challenge that person, right? And, um... When it came to Cole, I felt like I was always waiting for that. Like, I'll use Kanye as an example. 
I think the heights of, you know, his admiration for like Jay was seen on Big Brother, but as he went on further in his career, I felt he almost had to, you know, maybe not on record necessarily, but he basically was on some shit like, I'm greater than Jay. Like, I've surpassed Jay. I'm the greatest. You know, when he wrote that long ass, uh, He wrote, he wrote this, uh, let me see, fuck, he had wrote this, like, whole thing on Instagram talking about, you know, wait, uh, I can't even, like, he was just like, yo, I'm, I brought you this guy, this guy, this guy, and I read it, and I said, yo, Kanye's just spin facts. Like, Kanye went from the guy who was the, you know, fly on the wall in the studio, the guy giving the beats, the guy who give the beats, but rap sometimes, the guy, to, to being the guy who's, like, I don't think he even think Jay-Z on his level, I'm gonna be honest with you. And when I, when I say that, I say eventually when watching someone grow, and even like, I'll even use Drake, Drake and, and Wayne, even though it's been super respectful. He comes in rapping on Ransom with, 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 with um, Drake, I'm talking about Drake and Wayne. Drake comes in rapping on Ransom with, with Wayne, gives him a lot of credit to send third. As time goes on, you can see almost, they become almost damn near competitors. Not that they're really competing, but it's like, because they're on the same team. But then it also gets to a point where you see Drake basically take the throne, right? Like you see on Scene Green, Scene Green, you, you literally see it, right? Like the lyrics actually say it, right? What Drake said on, on his verse. Uh, yeah, he says, Ideas me the ice is free. Oh, oh my bad, I can't even see it. Ideas me the ice is free on the Jesus is bringing me closer to God. I'm already close to the mob. I'm already known as the GOAT. And this is on a song he's with his mentor on. He's with Lil Wayne on this song. You could try to get close, but you won't. Right? And that is like a natural, you know growth of someone who is even respectful but like you grow into being the guy i remember listening to j cole early on i think it was mr nice watch was that the one i might be wrong yeah maybe it wasn't this one is, it, is this one mm, yeah 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 it was mr nice watch jay-z on the track with him and I've always, like, even the way he rapped, right, uh, it was always, like, like trying to get the approval of Jay and to show that he belonged in the spot that he was in. And I was watching his career as it progressed, and I was saying, okay, all right, th that's how you start out. Eventually, you're going to really kind of get your reins and kind of get, you know, your feet underneath you. And hopefully at a point you can actually believe that you're the guy. And, you know, you know, obviously him and Jay-Z's era is not the same, so whatever, whatever. But I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think Cole ever believed it. <laughs> I think Cole was just always on some happy to be here shit. He know he had the talent. He was always, like, challenged. He, he did live up to it a bunch of times, but I don't think he ever thought, like how Kanye eventually thought, like how Drake eventually thought, I'm the fucking guy. I'm the best Shout to the mentor that who I was looking up to and rapping alongside on Ransom and rapping alongside or making his beats for Blueprint. But I'm the fucking guy right now. I think J. Cole was just never like that. J. Cole was never like that. Yeah, the star is born. Thank you. Thank you for that one. The star is born. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh -uh. Yeah. And see, see, even those verses sound beta. And could I be a star? Does fame in this game have to change who you are? Or could I be the same who came from a, from afar? Away life, just to make uh, make it in these Broadway lights. Now I'm shining a broad daylight. Go figure, a slow transition from a little broke nigga from the Ville. Got a deal, a real life saver. Dreams of being behind the wheel like Jada. Now I uh, chill. 
Now cop a little ice later. Cole, you got to glow like a little lightsaber, so clap for him. Then applaud Hove. He gave him a platform. Flow so sick. He uh, thought he wrote the rap for him. No, sir. The flow Cole is a... A fucking disappointment, man. Okay. Unfortunately, we we just got to read out the eulogy for um, J. Cole, man. Here lies, here lies the guy who had a spark when he started. He ain't garbage, but he just ain't it, man. Just ain't it. From here on going forward, we can't really mention J. Cole in any serious hip-hop competitive conversations. You know, I heard somebody say recently, and I think that might be appropriate for J. Cole, Tim Duncan. But but even then, Tim Duncan was really great. He just never was into that conversation of, I'm the best. But he was one of the best at all times. So I don't even know if Tim Duncan is the appropriate thing to call J. Cole, man. I'm trying to figure that out. But regardless, man, uh, J. Cole could no longer be put in any serious uh, hip-hop discussions. What he did to me was blasphemy. Apologize to a nigga. And here's the thing. This is lyrical competition. We've seen people engage in lyrical competition. And even if it did go a little bit left, or if it, if it stayed above, you know, a certain type of, you know, low blows or whatever, no diddy, people moved on from it. To completely pull a bitch move in the midst of the beef, just throw your hands up and apologize to the nigga who dissed you and who made the most blatant diss first is just something that's unfathomable, something that's unforgivable. You let Nas down, you let hip hop down, and I hope at some point you realize you let yourself down. All you did for the last three years, and I listened to every interview and every song where you said that you were thinking about legacy. What do you want to be remembered for? You're going to be remembered for the nigga who at the moment when it called, when the championship game called, you had nothing to fucking offer. This is an embarrassing stain for his career. This is an embarrassing stain for his legacy. He's always going to be a great rapper, but he's always going to be the rapper who never was. The rapper who was always a couple inches too short. No diddy. The rapper who never could really compete. The rapper who was talking himself into being the best rather than having that killer instinct. I'm sorry, J. Cole. We love you, but please, politely, step to the side. And I do have to say, Drake, refrain from doing any more songs with this nigga for the foreseeable future. Yeah, we do want to hear some songs with you and him again, but this is war time. This is competition time. He wants to do fun shit, okay? He wants to get his spirituality right. He wants to get his soul right. When you're rapping in all these little, you know what I mean, back and forths and these type of songs, we want to hear killers. We want to hear, I'd rather you rap with Jack Harlow right now than rap with that nigga. That nigga clearly don't want to be in the game, bro. He the nigga who get in the boxing ring and cry and be like, yo, why y'all do this to me? He don't want to do this, okay? Now, Let's address this part and then we'll go on to some meek shit too. Okay, where are we now? You know what? One thing I want to I want to go back to real quick. How did J Cole respond to Control? Does anybody remember? Does anybody remember how he responded to Control? Oh, let me see what RDC got to say about this. Here we go. They said this is J. Cole fans when they heard Kendrick this on the Metro album. Yo, hey bro, hey, I know it's early, but Kendrick this J. Cole. Stupid ass. Come on, man. It's friendly competition, bro. No, no, it's not friendly this time, bro. Bro, what are you talking about? He really, they really dissed. They, they, he dissed him. You about K. Dot? Yes. Mr. Morale? Yes, him. Yeah. It's Mr. Morale, bro. He got morals and shit. That nigga not doing that shit for nah, real, bro. It's kidding around. Too. That's they why best I, friends, nigga. No, that's why I thought he the big stepper right now, bro. He really dissed him. Oh, my God, bro. Let me hear it, bro. Damn, bro. Ready? Waking me up for this. Come on. Who, who, who beat is this? Uh, Metro. It's Metro beat. 
Metro and Future. Boy, Metro Future mm-hmm. and, and Kendrick Lamar jumping? Well, they just they just Drake too. Wait, wait. Yeah, play, yeah, play, yeah. Let me hear. Play. Yeah. Why that be so hard? I don't know. No, something not right. Something not right. Oh, my bad. <laughs> my bad, Chad. No, I was saying, yo, my bad, my bad on that. All I'm trying to say, this, this nigga Kendrick is too disrespectful. And I'm going to be honest with you, I just don't like it. There's a tone, there's a tone in his voice that's just too disrespectful, man. You're not keeping it friendly when you talk about you snatching chains, burning tattoos. Like, j- just listen to how he's talking. These niggas talking out their necks. Don't pull no coughing out your mouth. I'm way too paranoid for a threat. Hey, let's get it, bro. DOT, the money, power, respect. The last one is better. And that's a fact. That respect. It's that respect that made that nigga J. Cole cop a plea. Says a lot of goofies with a check. I mean, uh. I hope them sentiments symbolic of my temperament bipolar. I choose violence. Okay, let's get it up. It's time to, for him to prove that he's a problem. Niggas clicking up but cannot be legit no 40 water. Tell him. And uh, get up with me. Fuck sneak this in first person. That nigga say fuck sneak this in. First person shooter. I hope they came with three switches. I crash out like fuck rap. This Melly Mel if I had to. Got two T's with me. I'm snatching chains and burning tattoos. Why is this nigga talking like this? It's up. Lost too many soldiers not to play safe. If you walk around with that stick, it ain't Andre 3K. Think I won't drop the location? Nigga, I still got PTSD. Nigga, I'm all fucking fuck the big three. Nigga, it's just big me. What? I'm really like that. And your best work was a light pack. Nigga, Prince Outlive Mike Jack. For all your dogs getting buried as a kid with all these nines, he gonna st- J. Cole, a special breed of soft, man. I, I ain't gonna lie to you. It's no way you let a nigga say this and then you retract your diss and tell him, yo, slap me again, it's fine. I'll take it on the cheek. What the fuck is this? The fuck is this nigga talking about? No, he's talking about Cole right there. He talking about Cole. Cole said he be walking around with a stick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, it's up. Wait, does Cole say that? 
No, he's talking about Cole right there. He's talking about Cole. Cole said he be walking around with a stick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, it's up. It's up. No. K Dot, no. Why are you fully cool? Because I knew something was up, bro. I knew something was up. I couldn't it's sleep a, right. No, nah, hell no. Nah. Man, what the fuck is the hillbillies doing, bro? No, nah, bro. PG Lane, bro. I'm falling, dog. This is what you doing, bro. They want to jump and shit. We got, okay. Who is it? We got Cole. We got Drake. Shit. Yo, I swear, man. J. Cole, man, I'm going to tell you, man, you a different breed of soft, man. Listen, you know what? If this was a New York rap, I, 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 I hate to make it regional. Nigga, Kendrick would have got some bars. I ain't even going to lie. They would have they would have French fried that nigga Baby Keem. He got to catch it just because. The whole family got to catch it, nigga. How the... Good ball, let's listen. In my spirit of trying to, like... Get this music out. I moved in a way that was that I feel spiritually feel bad on me. Like, like I try to like jab my back, and I try to keep it friendly when I listen to it. And when it comes out, and I see the talk, that shit don't sit right with my spirit. That make me feel that shit disrupts my fucking peace. So what I want to say right here tonight is in the midst of me doing that and and in that shit, trying to find a little angle and downplay this this fucking, uh, catalog and his greatness. I just want to come up here and be like publicly be like, bro. That was the lamest, like, goofiest shit. And it make, I say all that to say, it made me feel like 10 years ago when I was moving incorrectly. Mm. And I pray that God aligned me back up on my purpose and on my path. Mm. You know what I mean? I pray that my nigga really didn't feel no way. And if he did, my nigga got my chin out. Take your best shot. I'm going to take that shit on the chin, boy. Do what you do. I, know, I, know. I pray that, you know, I pray that y'all are, like, forgiven for, like, the misstep. And then, and then I can get back to my true path. Because I ain't going to lie to y'all. Past two days felt terrible. Like, mm. oh. It let me know how good I've been sleeping for the past 10 years. That's right. I have feelings as a man, feelings as a hip-hop fan. The hip-hop fan in me isn't disappointed because in life you have to pick your battles and you have to pick your battles carefully because danger comes from trying to surpass your limits. Cole, no, he didn't really want it with Kendrick. So if you don't really want it with a person, then you are pushing yourself past the limit you aren't willing to go. And that's usually when you end up getting hurt. Not to mention... What is Kendrick Lamar doing to... Yo, is Kendrick doing voodoo? Is Kendrick doing voodoo? How is Kendrick getting these grown... Somebody just, I, I, I seen this on Twitter. They said, hey, this ain't the first time Kendrick, Kendrick had a fuck nigga apologize to him. I'm like, what y'all mean? This ain't the first time Kendrick had niggas apologize. I got to look up these articles. They said Lupe apologized to Kendrick for criticizing his talent. Why is everybody scared of this fucking leprechaun? Lupe fiasco. A pop. Is this to catch? No, wait. This can't be real. I'll never do that shit again? What? Jay, like, try to go apologize again? Forgive my past transgressions. Yo, Kendrick doing voodoo. Kendrick doing voodoo. Kendrick doing voodoo. Kendrick doing voodoo. Chat, I had a long talk with the boy. 98% of it, you are not privy to. But I will tell you just one particular part. Because when this shit happened, I was at a crossroads. I said, I might be done with rap, man. Man, I really dedicated my life to, like, really watching all these things. This is the moments that I fucking love. And I was like, maybe I'm done with this shit, man. You got bitch niggas apologizing for this. This is crazy. And I said, if Drake, if Drake fucking up, does some shit like this, I'm done. I'm done. I, I, I've wasted, I've wasted over a decade of my life listening to this nigga's music if he does that. J. Cole, I mean, I was, uh, I do like his music too, but uh, come on. I hit the boy. I promise you. I promise you. And I said, brother, 
I said, I rarely ask for anything, but I beg as a fan. Yes, that's how I, that's how, that's how I pulled up. I'm sorry. I said, I beg as a fan. I said, I could read it for a minute. I said, I said, I'd rather you not respond, but please, and I sent the video of what this fuck nigga did. I said, well, please. Don't do no shit like this. Please don't apologize or do no weird shit. I've defended you. I've argued because I've liked your music for over a decade. Please, please don't do no shit like this. And it's the only thing I'll say. Drink last of me. <laughs> He said, he said, I can't fucking believe you would pull up and say some shit like that to me. You must not know me, nigga. He couldn't believe I would even ask him or even think he would do such a thing. And it brought me back. I realized, oh, okay, okay. It's only one bitch made nigga. Okay, man. Okay, go. He basically said, nigga, get the fuck out of here thinking that I would apologize to anybody. He didn't say that. But that was his demeanor. He said, I, he said, I can't believe you really came here to ask me this fucking bullshit. Are you fucking crazy? It told me all I need to know. Leave the beef for the real adults. It's only Kendrick and Drake. Niggas copping, please apologizing. My goat, never, 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 never. He was disappointed in me for even asking him that. Please don't, 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 don't do no weak shit like this. Please don't do it. He was disappointed that I had to even ask. I had to, I had to even just, just said, I can't believe you, you, you think. He was disappointed. He was disappointed. I don't know what Kendrick Lamar is doing to these fellas. This. Drake will never apologize. If Drake apologizes, I'm deleting everything online. I'm done, nigga. Y'all will never see me again, nigga. I'm moving back to Jamaica, nigga. <laughs> nigga, never in life, nigga. Never in life. And I also tell you. Now, let, me, let me just leave that. I'm going to leave that conversation there. Just, just know. Just know. And this is an open-ended thing. Drake will never duck a rap, nigga. And he's ready for all smoke. He's asking for it. I leave it there. He ain't ducking that rap, nigga. He's ready for all smoke. And he wants it. I can't speak for the energy of anybody else. Because I could imagine right now, J. Cole is clutching his little tempur pillow, crying, doing all type of shit, calling Kendrick on block numbers, Trying to get a response. I'm sorry I told him on stage I shouldn't have dissed you. But that will never be my goat. Just to let you know. Just to let you know. As we clear the field, and, and again, th these are my thoughts, my opinions. The only part I'll tell you, as I said, I did have a conversation with the boy. The only part of that conversation I would divulge is that he chastised me for even for even thinking that th that was his would be his demeanor ever with anybody. With anybody. He he's he's he enjoys rap kerfuffles, rap battles. He grew up on this shit. You gotta realize we're talking about a guy who he bought Pusha T's mic. He bought the all the memorabilia for Pharrell. This is a guy who has studied. He is this hip hop. I don't care what you might talk about his past. That's wheel stretch. He is a 
product of this culture. He enjoys the very essence of this culture. Battling, competition, lyricism. This is a guy that don't got to keep dropping like scary hours and 8 a.m.s in, in Charlotte and lemon pepper freestyle. This is a guy that could just keep dropping hit after hit after hit. But he enjoys it. This is a guy that him and Kendrick ain't in the same fucking league when it comes to motherfucking success, stature, worldwide notoriety. But it ain't about that. It's about respect. It's about legacy. And he definitely don't believe there's one nigga in, in his rap game who can fuck with him lyrically. It's something called pride. It's something that I got to ask if J. Cole got. I wonder if he going to write another Let Nas Down Part 2. Nigga, you let us all down. So we will see. Uh, continuing, where, where do I think this is going to go? I, I actually believe that Drake should fall back at the moment. First and foremost, Thursday night, we're going to go get an album. From Metro Boomin in future, we still don't trust you. That's what it's being called. It's not a deluxe. It's another full, complete album. A lot of these things have been kept close to the chest about what's on it. And from what I've talked to other industry people who do know people in that camp, they heard only of the Kendrick Lamar diss song, The Day Of, when the album was slated to be released. So it was really kept close that they were going to have some explosive moments or some dissing from Kendrick. The person that cleared the beat, the sample for the beat, they apparently never even heard Kendrick's verse. So they didn't know that there was going to be a moment had on this song. I can only give you my opinion on what I think should happen for both parties. And I'm going to try to be unbiased, even though you know I clearly have a horse in the race. Right? I think Drake should chill out. Fall back. Falling back doesn't mean you're ducking the beef. But let me tell you this. Drake is the A-side. You see, as you see Metro and all these other guys keep saying, Oh, the song went gold in a week. We're breaking records. We're selling this. The album is a Drake diss album. They're exploiting the fact that the subject and the fodder for conversation happens to be about their dislike or their dismay with Drake. For that, I think Drake should realize because he's an A-side, you don't need to operate in their moment, operate in yours. That's big. If you respond in a week, it gives more life to this album. It gives more life to these. Uh, again, if, if we're, we got to think strategically. Also, if we are to believe the chronological order of how we got to like that, we got there because Drake dropped First Person Shooter. First Person Shooter wasn't dropped a couple days before. It was dropped months before, damn near a year before. Okay? On the For All The Dogs album. So there was months that Kendrick had to work on this, respond, plan his moves. Drake should move accordingly. Now, this all changes if Kendrick drops a, a, a direct diss song. If Kendrick drops a bomb, a solo song going in on Drake, oh, it's all stopped. Drake is now on a time clock. We, we, we It's a time clock. I'm sorry. And I call, I, I call these situations as fairly as I can. But because as much as Kendrick's verse was direct, it's still subliminal and it's a feature Drake could respond months from now on someone else's feature or however he wants to respond. Another reason why he should definitely not 
respond in the immediate future. And I'm going to just say, let's say that's the next couple of weeks. I named one reason. There's another album coming by Metro. Keep in mind, you're fighting multiple ops as well. Just like how Kendrick theoretically was going against Drake and Cole. Drake is going against Metro, allegedly Future, maybe Rick Ross, and of course, goddamn Kendrick Lamar. You're watching a lot of things at play. So, if you're Drake, you want to not only fall back because there's an album coming, you want to fall back because what J. Cole has done has made it almost impossible for you to have the same result. Kendrick dropped a song and made a nigga who responded apologize without even asking him to apologize. Whatever you put out will be weighted in terms of impact the same way if you do it immediately. Damn, his song got the other nigga to just, just cop a plea. Yeah, your song was hard, but shit. That's, that's, that's how, again, you know how people are going to talk about this. Drake's, uh, no, Kendrick's song was so hard that a nigga he dissed tried to diss him back and just said, I'm sorry, I should have never done it. How do you compete with that? How do you compete with that? Yeah, 